Good morning and hello again, everyone. This is Mark Thompson with Watermark Data, and you are watching the Alteryx tutorials. This session, we're going to be talking about weekly challenge number 69, and it's going to be something a bit different. We are going to take and capture data from the web. And you notice I've got a text input tool, and there's my there's my URL right there. And just to show you, this is what it is over here on the web. Okay. And in here, you'll notice there's actually mushroom and CSV. This is the file we're going to be capturing. So as you look at it, and I can't really tell you, I can't really jump down here because it disappears. But as I hover over it, you can see where it says slash r slash mushrooms.csv. That is the same location that we have right here. So we have that URL in a text input file. And what we want to do is we want to be able to capture the information that you see over on the website. So if we go down here, we've got all of this information about mushrooms, okay? Mushroom data table effectively. And the person who has put this together out there on Data Hub has put a CSV out there that we're going to go capture. So how do we do that? First of all, we take and we put that URL into a text input tool, just like that. And then we use a tool called a download tool. And you can find that on the developer's menu. See that little lightning bolt? And so I'm going to open this up just a touch. We're not going to have to do a whole lot to this file. But you can, there are absolutely different levels you can go with headers and payloads and connections and APIs. So we're, that's far beyond where we're at. But this simple one right now today, this is a download. And when you put it in, so it comes in like that and it comes out with a download data and a download headers. That download headers is effectively just a confirmation that, hey, Everything seems to have worked out all right. This download data is what we're now going to be working with. Our next tool on this, text to columns, and you can find that up here in the menu for parse. Text to columns right there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to, we're going to select that column, the download data, and then we're going to put delimiter in here. But the delimiter in this case is a little different. This is a special delimiter. It's a slash N, which means new line. So we're going to actually take and use the text to column tool, but we're going to leverage new line. And when you see it come out, so it comes in like, let me give it the anchor here. It comes in like that and it comes out like this. So all of those different pieces of information that are on different lines come out. Now this next tool, I just like to clean things up. So I take the select tool and you know what? I can get rid of the URL now. I can get rid of that download headers. I only need that download data column. And now I'm going to apply a text to column again. And yes, I could have done this in one piece, but I want to break out so that you understand the steps. So here in this one, I am using a delimiter of a comma, of a comma right there. And you may have to play around with this and you, you try 15 columns, 20 columns, 30 columns. How many do you actually have? You could go cheat. You could go count them over on the website. But we settle in at 23. So we now have 23 columns. And look at all of these out here. And one of the things I want you to notice is this first row of data, which appears in this case to have the headers. So the next item that we want to do is we want to go grab the dynamic rename. Super useful tool. Super useful. And you can, again, you can find this back over on the menu for the developers. And you've got the little handwritten, it looks like somebody writing with a pencil. Okay. And in that download headers, or I mean, excuse me, in the dynamic rename, my bad, 
you've got a rename mode. How are you going to do it? And there's different selections. You can do a formula, you can take it from the first row of data. Notice that there is actually another input. You could get the, the headers from another file. And so I would suggest you go play with that if you're interested in seeing all of the different ways to do it. In this case, we see that the data coming in is in that first row of data. So we don't, we're not capturing it from another file. We're not being fancy. We're doing a take field names from first row of data. And we wanna capture all of the names. We don't necessarily have to. If you've got different ones that do and don't, you can capture that. We're nearly there. Once you get this output, you see that those are now your headers. Cap size, color, bruises, odor, grill size, all of the different features that you could ever identify in a mushroom. And then finally, you know what? Let's get rid of that first column. We deselect that. And there we go with our finished product. That'll wrap it up. I am Mark Thompson. This is Watermark Data. As always, please hit like, please hit share, and let me know in the comments down below if you have anything to let me know. Love to hear from you. Have a great one.